In this video, I'm going to show you how to in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the screen follow the mouse in the free video under shotcut. Hello everyone, I am Budget Recording, and on this channel I try and help make your video look better and audio sound better in videos just like these. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe so you can see the next video that I post. As I just said, I am going to be showing you how to make your screen follow your cursor in a more zoomed in format to make it easier for people to follow your tutorials. These techniques can also be applied to other video editors so long as you are able to change the size of the video and the positioning of it, as well as keyframe it. So what you're going to need is the video clip. Uh, this is from my Removing Sibilance in Audacity with no additional plugins video. It should be linked in the top right of your screen right about now. And then you will also need um, one filter. So click the clip. There's already a gain volume just so you can hear the audio better. And what you, the filter you will want will be the rotate and scale. And then you've got that. You are also going to want to keyframe Y offset, X offset, and scale. So the first frame of this, I'm already by the effects window or the effects menu. So I just want to scale it up to be zoomed in there and then X offset changes where it's positioned horizontally Y offset changes where it's positioned vertically. Now they are both set up right there and you can see the keyframes have been created. And then I want to go further in the video, go into effect and then, or actually I want one right before the cursor starts moving. So I'm just going to make that 238 and that just made another keyframe right where I needed it. At the moment, I don't need to keyframe anything else. And then you will go further down and then I just need to move down some. So go into Y offset, find where you need to go. And now when you watch that back, go into effect and then filter curve. It shows that just for you. It zooms in nicely so you can see exactly where the cursor is going. And then finally, since it goes back to a full window, it's now fading out. So I'm going to begin the keyframing with this. So I'm just going to go, uh, 285.8, 285.8, so that should add another keyframe. This will be 238 again. So now we've got keyframes there and there, and then we also need negative 34. And then go however many frames later you need to go. And then by this point, I want to be zoomed back out and then change the X and Y offset so that I can see the filter curve window. I think I need to be at like negative 85. Nope. Oh, zero works perfectly fine. So go to zero scale back out and there we are we're zoomed in on just that and that is all you really need to do and then if you need to adjust y offset you could and that's why we added that final keyframe not always necessary but if it is you now have it so when you look at the final product go into effect and then filter curve. It looks really quite smooth and it's not as perfect as some, but some of that's partly because my uh, cursor was slightly shaky and also because there isn't a tracking feature in Shotcut. There are in some other video editors, but this still works just as well and this way it's really easy to follow tutorials that you make, especially if there's a lot of small menus. 
I hope you found this video helpful, and I also want to thank Mayoya. I think I said that right, but there's also a good chance I didn't. For uh, They are the person that suggested uh, me making this video, and without them, this video would not uh, have been made. So, uh, kind of along those lines, if you have any video suggestions or need help with anything, please do leave them in the comments. I read all my comments that, I, that get posted anymore. And if there's good video ideas in there, I will definitely make them. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And I am Budget Recording. I will see you next time.